So as you know, the innovation ecosystem here locally is expanding very rapidly. Um, I'm not sure you were aware of this, but we have uh, something like 60 uh, major corporations have uh, some R&D efforts located uh, like a stone's throw from this building, literally. And this is rapidly expanding. Uh, it started out, obviously, uh, with a very strong hold in life uh, science, but uh, companies all across the board are moving straight into here. Uh, but the effort we are running here at the Startup Exchange stretches much more internationally. If you just take a look at some of these statistics, you know, uh, among our 1,200 startups that were started out of MIT in the last decade, most of them are already running international businesses. Uh, some of them are, in fact, not even here. So uh, a lot of them have set up shop, you know, uh, if you're an alum and you live in Japan, that's where you're going to start your company. So this is a very global effort. Um, why do we have a startup exchange program at MIT um, when there are so many activities uh, going on with innovation? Well, it turns out that this corporate membership program, uh, we revealed a couple of years ago that companies uh, don't feel always that they have full access to all of the innovation going out of MIT. And you could perhaps believe it. There's just, um, you know, at the time of writing there, we thought there were between 50 and 70 startups. As I'm going to show you, uh, the number is, is probably a lot larger than that. But having access, looking uh, at the right uh, technologies and startups at early enough uh, was a priority for corporate uh, America and uh, internationally. It's gonna and and the, the strange thing as well, I think, for us was the finding that the startups themselves felt they didn't have uh, ideal access uh, to corporate partnerships, which uh, I think was a little bit of a surprise to us as well, given that you know, these are brilliant uh, people. We graduate from here, and they are, you, know, you are all uh, in, in top demand. So anyway, this is just to explain why we are even here. There was, it seems to be, a demand on both sides to create a better matchmaking tool, and that's what we've built. Uh, now, in the exact field of airspace, as we will discover throughout the day, this is a field that's rapidly uh, growing, but also growing in, in the kinds of firms that are interesting to the large players and in the sort of startups that are thinking that they have an aerospace offering. Here are just some very, very tentative statistics on what, what we know about that. I hope that today we'll actually uncover more about the truths here. We have plenty of drone startups. We have perhaps 16 pure play aerospace startups. Um, some of them are in the room today. Um, but we also have hundreds of startups that have services that are relevant in some way, perhaps to the supply chain, perhaps to the core of aerospace or, uh, or somewhere in the supply chain. Last year, we had 83 startups that we documented. And I think as we are rolling on with this initiative, we are going to discover more and more startups. But, you know, we can only count what we can see. So 83 startups is what we were logging. They were, if you want to group them, Advanced manufacturing, which I think is part of the topic here today, was indeed one of the major thrusts of startups that came out of, the, of campus. Big data analytics, probably not, all, and not irrelevant to aerospace either. And then health breakthroughs were perhaps the third category of startups. Um, what kinds of things do we do for startups? Well, sometimes we actually bring them out of stealth. There are startups that um, we are the first to introduce them to a corporate audience. You know, we're not Squawk Box, we're not, you know, a, a major news organization, but we kind of break the news to the corporates. And that is, has been found to be a very important uh, service for startups. Uh, we're also taking startups on the road. We've been to the foreign country of California twice, and we are going even further out to London, and uh, we're taking startups to China. Very excited today. Uh, to let you know about an initiative that we are only sort of pre-launching. We haven't really uh, been out there with uh, the full news about this. But we are slowly now rolling out what's called STEX25. It's an accelerator program for 25 of the new and most emerging uh, uh, startups that ca uh, came out of MIT over the last five years. Um, and we will be giving them accelerated access to matchmaking services towards the corporate sector. So it's a very specific type of accelerator. It, it goes, cuts across all fields. Um, and uh, you can nominate startups for that through MIT labs, such as CSAIL, such as uh, you know, the Trust Center for uh, MIT Entrepreneurship. So essentially, the, these startups are nominated from internally at MIT, and then they become part of what we do, uh, which is introducing uh, startups and trying to create 
partnerships or fo help foster partnerships between corporates and startups. Some of the things that we have succeeded with include, uh, you know, Henkel, that was a, a member here for a long time. Uh, they were introduced to Dropwise, a wonderful startup uh, out of a couple of MIT labs. Uh, so that's just one, one example of a partnership agreement that we were part of fostering. Sometimes it extends to investment. Samsung, another member company, invests in autonomy. That has gotten quite a bit of attention lately for self-driving cars. Um, overall, over the last two years that this program has been in, in action, we have worked with over 30 of our member companies. That number is rapidly out of date uh, because I think that we were tapping into something that almost every large company is interested in. Here are some of the active partnership opportunities that our startups can apply to right now. Go, go on the website and log in and, and apply to very explicit wishes to look into certain trends, topics, technologies for various types of partnerships. I think I'm going to leave it right there. And we will head straight to the main part of, uh, of the day, which is our exciting startups. And you will note that we don't have a lot of time, so I ask everyone to be mindful that we have about two minutes for each startup.